Hello, George Romanich here. Welcome to Fundamentals of Weather and Climate playlist. In today's video, we are going to talk about how the composition of the air changed throughout the history of our planet. You will remember that in last video I said 78% of air that we breathe is nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and only 1% various other gases. However, the Earth's atmosphere did not have that composition throughout the evolution of our planet. When our Earth formed, and we believe that was approximately 4.5 billion years ago, together with the rest of the solar system, it was a giant hot ball of fire. And if there were any gases around that atmosphere, they would quickly be ejected into outer space. So we would say there was no atmosphere. And I will demonstrate this proof of concept in the next video, when we will see that Mercury, which is the closest planet to the Sun, does not have atmosphere because it's scorching hot over there. However, if there were any gases here, they had to be hydrogen and helium because these are the most abundant gases in the universe. So therefore, we would say early Earth did not have atmosphere, but if there was any, it would be these two gases. However, time was passing and Earth started cooling down. As the Earth was cooling down, we started getting first atmosphere. And we believe that first atmosphere was associated with volcanic eruptions and steam vents. Research suggests that the composition of gases ejected into the atmosphere during volcanic eruptions and steam vents is the same throughout the history of our planet. However, back in the early days of our planet, they, there were way more volcanic eruptions and various steam vents. Here is a steam vent in Yellowstone Park. You can see it's mostly water vapor. Here is a uh, volcanic crater, and you can see a lot of water vapor being released, but there are some other gases as well. So, what are the typical gases released during volcanic eruptions? Well, it about eight, sorry about that, about 80% of gases released during volcanic eruptions is water vapor. Then about 10% of these gases is carbon dioxide, CO2, and then we have few percent of other gases. Few percent of uh, SO2, sulfur dioxide, and few percent of nitrogen, N2. And of course, there is a lot of aerosols, particles of dirt uh, and ash being released into the atmosphere. Now, some volcanic eruptions have certain variability. Some other molecules of sulfur could appear and so on. But this is generally what we find in, a, in volcanic eruptions. However, air that we breathe today, we discussed that in great lengths in previous video, is 78% nitrogen, N2, 21% oxygen, O2, and 1% other gases. But out of these other gases, it is typically argon. So if you look the right side of this figure and the left side, you can see they do not correspond. Namely, what volcanoes are releasing is not what we breathe today, and yet I claim that the atmosphere was mostly formed through these volcanic eruptions and steam vents. So how did we get from this to that? Well, that is what I will describe in the next few minutes. Volcanic eruptions are releasing these gases. And we believe that in the early days of our planet, our planet was very rich on CO2. As a matter of fact, Research suggests that sun's brightness was only approximately 70-75% of today's sun's brightness, but our atmosphere might have been warmer. That's because there was a lot of CO2 
in our atmosphere and we can find evidence of very hot atmosphere rich with CO2 if we look into our neighbor Venus. And then time was passing and no amount of coin would conv convince Witcher to take this job. Let me know in the comment section below if you know from which video game this reference is. Anyways, as the time was passing, Earth was cooling down. As Earth was cooling down, this water started condensing and we start having precipitation. At some point, for thousands and thousands and millions of years, we had precipitation falling on this planet. And then we start having first oceans and first rivers and first lakes. And oceans dissolve CO2. So our atmosphere starts losing CO2 through ocean uh, acquisition. And then approximately 540 million years ago, we have Cambrian explosion, evolution of life on this planet. As that is happening, we start having plants and organisms in, this, in the oceans consuming additional CO2. So as you can see, the CO2 in our atmosphere is getting uh, down and down as the time is progressing. And then approximately 460, 470 million years ago, we have first plants appearing on the surface of the earth and they start the process of photosynthesis. And that process yet even more removes CO2 and as a byproduct gives us oxygen. So as you can see, as the time is progressing, CO2 is going down, oxygen is going up. And I hope that helps explaining how we are getting, how did we get less and less CO2 and how amount of oxygen has risen to this level. How about SO2? We don't basically have SO2 in the atmosphere, but there are a few percentages of SO2 in volcanic eruptions. Well, SO2 is very reactive and it tends to dissolve in water and falls together with precipitation. There is also dry uh, removal from the atmosphere through gravitational uh, force and so on. So SO2 quickly disappears from the atmosphere. And then how do we connect these few percentages of N2 with 78% percentage percent of N2 today? Well, as I described in great lengths in previous video, for the purpose that I will say now, N2 is not very reactive gas. So N2, these few percentages over millions and millions of years accumulated to be 78% that we breathe today. And therefore, through this process that I just described, we ended up today breathing 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen and other uh, gases in the amount of 1%, mostly argon. Some of you might ask, how did we get argon? Well, you would be right, there is no argon typically in volcanic eruptions, but argon is formed uh, through radioactive decay of potassium-40 in our crust, similar to other noble gases in the atmosphere such as krypton, neon and so on. So if we now look back at, for example, this uh, steam vent process, we can understand it better. Similarly, now you understand what are the gases that are typically leaking out during these volcanic eruptions and how that process through millions and millions of years created air that we breathe today. And what we breathe today is this beautiful atmosphere and oceans full of water I forgot to say, but we believe that additional source of water on this planet was also asteroid and uh, meteor impacts, meteor impacts particularly. We have clouds, condensed water, we have this air that you and I and everybody we know can breathe. And to our knowledge, there is no other atmosphere in this solar system or anywhere else that has this composition of air to support life. As I will demonstrate to you in the next video, when I talk about atmosphere of other planets in this solar system, these atmospheres are profoundly different to what we have here on this planet. So be nice, be a good person, don't pollute, because this is the only air that we can breathe in this universe 
to the best of our knowledge. Until the next video, goodbye.